beautiful, beautiful day it is. As we get ready for worship today, uh, any announcements at all that we wish to share as we get ready for worship? Any updates or prayer concerns? Any news at all? If not, we're going to turn right on there in our bulletins to the responsive call to worship. And let's worship the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Be satisfied with God's love when morning breaks. We will sing with joy and be glad all our days. Now let's sing hymn number 433, Christ is made the sure foundation. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Jesus is our high priest, able to sympathize with us in our weaknesses. Christ is intended in every way like we are. 
but without sin. He intercedes for us at the throne of our gracious God. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. And it is time now for us to bring our regular tithes and offerings to the Lord. ask you to accept this gift and use it, O oh God. Use it to do your work, to fulfill your purpose here in this time and in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now let's sing together hymn number 473, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. together, Lord, here in your house, for all the blessings, the blessings that we know, and the blessings that we count, and the blessings that we don't know, and we don't count. Open our hearts, O God, and let us be grateful. Let us be grateful for all that is working, for all that is good, for all that 
functions as it should for all the blessings with which you surround us. Help us and guide us, Lord, that we wouldn't be too absorbed with that which is broken, that which is not working, that we would see and know your presence, your power, your guidance and blessing all through our lives. Lord, we thank you for this magnificent country. We thank you, Lord, for all the people who do that patient work of serving on various boards, Lord God, and various agencies to help make this civil society continue to function and function well. We thank you, Lord, for all those who are engaged in trying to solve problems and trying to work out solutions and trying to make this a better place. And so, Heavenly Father, our prayers of blessing. Lord, we pray for all those who served this country in the United States military, many of them in some very difficult spots right now, doing some very difficult and dangerous work. And so, Lord God, we pray for all those in the Navy out there on the ships and all those, all those in the Air Force, all those in the Army, all those in the Marine Corps, the Coast Guard and the National Guard, all those who are doing the work of defending the cause of freedom wherever they may be. Lord God, a special prayer for all of our older friends and neighbors. We ask your blessings on all those in nursing homes, all those in adult homes, all those who maybe need a little extra help due to illness or to age in any way. All those who are ill, suffering from any kind of health needs, whatever the need is, Lord God, in the name and by the power of Jesus, we speak healing. Special prayers for Brian today, Lord God, that you would settle that, that bug down and help him, Heavenly Father, to recover completely, <coughs> be with him in all the treatments that he is receiving. Bless, guide, and strengthen him for healing. Prayer for Beverly, Lord God, for, and just acknowledging the miracle of healing and asking your continued, your continued blessings with Bev, that you would bless her and keep her. Be with Steve and strengthen him, encourage him in every way. Lord God, special prayers for Joe. Lord, for his breathing, for his heart rate, for the swelling of his feet, whatever, Lord God, that Joe needs this day, our prayer is for encouragement. Our prayer is for blessing, for strength, and for healing. Prayers for Galen as he receives his treatment, Lord God, that his treatment would be effective and that you'd be with Galen for healing. And continued prayers, Lord God, for Richard Anderson and for Edith Bradley. For all those we need, Lord God, who need your blessings. All those we know, Heavenly Father, who need your blessings. We ask those blessings <clears throat> in Jesus' name. Hear these prayers that have been spoken out loud, yet many others that are silent within our hearts. Hear us as we pray together the way Jesus taught us, saying, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture today, three scripture readings. The first scripture reading is from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, starting with verse 31. And this passage is uh, really one of the most famous central 
heavily emphasized passages in the Old Testament. This is Jeremiah's announcement of the new covenant. The new covenant. So I will start reading to you from Jeremiah verse 30, chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. This is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it upon their hearts, and I will be their God. They will be my people. No longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord. They shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sin no more. This reading from the 14th chapter of John's Gospel. And from John chapter 14, I'm going to start reading with the 18th verse. John 14, verse 18. These are the words of Jesus. He says, I will not leave you desolate. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you are in me. Me, and I am in you. He who has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now Judah, not, not, not the betrayer, not Iscariot, Judah said to him, Lord, how is it that you will <coughs> manifest yourself to us and not to the world. Jesus answered, If a man loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Now we're going to turn to Paul's letter to the Ephesians a short reading from Ephesians, from Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Ephesians 4, 1. I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, forbearing one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. As you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who is above all and through all and in all, but grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Now today, I am going to give you, if you want it, a postcard. And... We're gonna, I've got a whole stack of postcards in this little bag here. I'm gonna pass out the postcards. And I want you just to pick one. I want you to pick one because I want you to pick a place. A place. And a time. 
Got to look at that postcard and you got to kind of try to sort of see if you can kind of sort of estimate roughly what year it was. Now, we're not going to be exact. You don't have to say, well, this was 1942. You can say 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever rough time it was and the place. The time and the place. It's just about finding a place. Because the, 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 the scripture today is meant to guide us, very simple, Whatever place you're in, that place has positives and negatives. Whatever place you're in, there is a God who is the God of all times and all places. And that God is with you, and that God will guide you. So let's, let me start by passing out the postcards and... Uh, I want you to take one. I'm just going to... I have thousands of these. And uh, like a lot of the stuff I pile up in my life, you know, they're a lot of fun, but they're not worth very much. So you can... Uh, yeah, we got, I got, the, these are the ones they did at Nahala, but I want you just to take, just take what you can here, and uh, now remember, we're, we're looking for places, so if the postcard doesn't talk about a place, just go on and pick another one, and get yourself a little place, a place to go today, what will be the place that you go. Now let's pick a place. Pick, pick a time. Pick a place. Don't need to take a whole lot. Just a time and a place. And see, I got the last little bit here. Whoops. whoops. There goes something. I'm dropping stuff everywhere I go. <laughs> well, I, I, I just got a, found it on the floor here, uh, a souvenir ticket to tour the United States Capitol, um, conducted by the Capitol Guide Service. Here we go. Here, Peter. Go ahead and pick something. Well, I found mine. I got mine. All righty. Okay, I, I, I'm going to go first. Now, I, I'm only going to ask for a tiny little handful of volunteers to share with me the places that they're going and, the, and, and what is your place, okay? I'm going to start. Everybody got it figured out? Pick yourself a place. I picked the USS America CV-66 in the Mediterranean Sea, USS America, Light Operations, January 13th, 1991. January 13th, 1991, that would be 31 years ago on an aircraft carrier in the Mediterranean Sea. There's a picture, there's a time, there's a place. All you need is a picture, a time, and a place. You ready? Brad, what you got? Oh, Brad's over there. Brad's there. That's right. That's right. That's right. No. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, whichever one. Whichever one's got a place. Right. Red. 30s. 30s where? Lake Mountain, Virginia. Third. Very good. The 30s, Lake Mountain, Virginia. Donald, where are you? 1910. Where? Hillsville, Virginia. 
Oh, Hillsville, Virginia, 1910. All righty. Brad, what have you got? Monticello, Charlottesville, Virginia. Monticello, Charlottesville, Virginia. Let me get from the back row here. This is, uh, mm -hmm. looks like the Last Supper in um, Glendale Springs, North Carolina in 1980. Very good. That's a church picture? Uh -huh. Church postcard. How nice is that? We should do a Cobb Memorial. Oh, Trinity Episcopal Church. Trinity Episcopal Church. So you got the name of the church, the All time, the yep, and the place. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody got anything else? They, what you got, Steve? I have no idea what year this is, and, and, and there's some people here who can uh, relate to this. Uh, this is the tomb of the un unknown soldier. And uh, I've been there, and I'm sure that other people have been there as well. Uh, you look at the uniforms, and the uniforms have pretty much been the same for years and years and years and years. Uh, I was there um, probably 2010, somewhere in that area, and the uniform looks the same. But it's, uh, it's a place that, uh, that touches a lot of our hearts, uh, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. Yeah, Arlington Cemetery, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier, and to date the picture, the only way you could actually date it would be to get about this far from the ribbons that the, that the guy's wearing, and then you could date it. But beyond that, the, 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 the Tomb of the Unknowns in Arlington is one of those places that does not change very much. It's also a place when you are there, you know you're there. It's a powerful place. It's a place that really has a lot of spiritual strength and power. Now, what I want to suggest to you today is you look at your postcard, as you look at this little place in this little time, I want you to think back on all the troubles and the times and the places that you have been which have been very difficult for you to get through. Because the difficult times in your life, the good times in your life, just snapshots, just memories, just little flashes of memory where you connect to a place, you connect to a time. Now, the, the, starting with Jeremiah 31, uh, when, I, when I read this section of Jeremiah, <laughs> That what Jeremiah communicates to us here are these flashes, these pictures of the destruction and ruin and loss and tragedy. Because the, 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 the Babylonians had and they had they had destroyed the place. Jeremiah had been incarcerated. He had been locked up by the king because of his consistent advocacy for the people to turn back to the Torah of God. And, and Jeremiah had been speaking this word and speaking this word, and the king finally just couldn't stand it anymore, had him locked up in the court guard, the palace guard's uh, station there, had Jeremiah locked up, the, the city came to be sacked by the Babylonians. They found Jeremiah locked up, and Jeremiah was allowed to go on to Egypt. It was in Egypt after the destruction that Jeremiah put these words down and, and put this word, this book together, and then he passed away. There's just a picture. There's just a picture, and the way the early 500s BC, Jeremiah at the destruction of Jerusalem. That memory, that time, that place. Now, the interesting thing is that this is the best news that will ever be communicated, that God will make a new covenant. Uh, this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, 
says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God. They will be my people. No longer will, will one person call the other one and say, come on now, let's learn the ways of the Lord. But each one will know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity. I will remember their sin no more. So there, Jeremiah creates an image. And it is an image of a time and an image of a place when we know God. We just feel the presence of God. We feel the power of God. We feel the blessings of God. And we feel the, if you will, the, the closeness of Christ to us. That all of it starts to make sense. We start seeing how it all fits together. The glorious will of the Lord. We catch just a glimpse, just a glimpse, a snapshot, a picture, a postcard. That time, that place, that time, that place. For God is the God of all times and all places. God who is as powerful and present and real for us in the bad times as in the good times that draws together everything we experience in one glorious and beautiful whole. Now, I think today provides just an amazing example. What an opportunity to be in Tarboro, North Carolina today. Look up at the sky. I, I, I don't want to rub it in, you know, but what color is it? Yeah. <laughs> it is, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Just, I just had to get in trouble. I mean, you know, it, 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 uh, it is. And, and, and there's something about that blue. Driving up to Nehala today, driving by those cotton fields and seeing that cotton ready to be brought in and, and, and just seeing these fields and this beautiful place and knowing that we are still home. We all live here in Tarboro. And we got some issues. We got some problems. There's some stuff that needs to be done. But friends, here we are. There's the picture. There's the postcard. There's the power of God present in our lives. Same message. Same assurance. Same blessing for us here in John's Gospel in chapter 14. And I picked this verse because of Jesus' statement, I will not leave you desolate. And I will not, you're, you are not an orphan. I'm not going to leave you, and the Greek word is orphanos. I'm not going to leave you alone by yourself as an orphan, desolate. You are not alone. You are not alone. So right now, if we made a little postcard of your life, right now today, in this place, whatever your trouble is, whatever the pain and sorrow, whatever the disappointment, whatever is wrong, whatever it is that's bothersome, whatever it is that's pushing you down, it is not that bad because you are not alone. You're not alone. You have God with you. You belong to this universe. You are connected to the grace and goodness and love of God every bit as much as if you were in that postcard on this ship in 1991 or in that place wherever you are with God. Listen to these scriptures. Uh, I will not leave you desolate. You're not alone. I will come to you. In a little while, the world will see me no more. 
Jesus says, this is a prophecy of Jesus. The world will not see me. Okay? The world doesn't see him, does it? The world doesn't see him. But because I live, it says, you will see me. You will see me. Because I live, you will live also. In that day, you will know that I am, that's that wonderful I am formula, I am in my Father, you are in me, I am in you. He who keeps my commandments, he it is that loves me. He who loves me will be loved by my Father. Jesus is with us. We are with him. Jesus is in us. We are in him. We're all connected. And that connection is deeper than the conditions of our lives. Now, if you take a look at all those postcards, all those places, all those choices of all the places we could be in our imagination, in all of those places, it is the same, the same, the same goodness that we seek. It is the same goodness, that indwelling presence of God. Take it over to Ephesians, because Paul really likes to, to, to make this point. You see, the new covenant, the law written in our hearts, the law that would come to us by the power of the Holy Spirit, the, the law that would come to us by grace through faith, that we would believe in the goodness of God and that that belief in the goodness of God would be sufficient for us to make it through whatever the trouble is, whatever the failure is, whatever the disease is, whatever the illness is, whatever the injury is, whatever is wrong, to make it through to triumph in Jesus Christ. This is what Paul says. I, a prisoner for the Lord. There's Paul's postcard, okay? You have your postcard, this is the spot, this is the spot, this is the spot. This great spot, that not so great spot. Paul's postcard, he was locked up. He was in prison. He was about to be executed. A prisoner from the Lord beg you live to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called. There is a call in your life with all lowliness and meekness, with patience, being patient with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. That's that goodness that that, that percolates through every one of those postcards. Unity of spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, and you're called to belong to one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of us all, who's above all and through all and in all. That is the grace to which we are called. And that grace moves beyond any of the postcard places that we can find ourselves, any of the places, uh, the conditions of our lives, the circumstances of our lives. It's all good and it's all good in and by the power of Jesus Christ and it's all good because the sinfulness and badness and evil is all forgiven it's gone it's behind us now what's in front of us is the blessing of God the blessing of Jesus Christ the blessing of this day in this place the blessings of God amen and now, let us share the words of our faith using the Apostles' Creed. Will you rise if you're comfortable standing?
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end Amen sing hymn number 398 sweet hour of prayer Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.